I'm going to tell you about all new electric cars coming to the market in the US and in Europe. So let's get going. Acura ZDX. Now, much like its parent company Honda, it is a little late to the electric car revolution. And by a little, I mean a lot. But this is not a bad offering right here. About 325 miles. That's what Acura is promising, which is pretty decent. 0 to 60 in about 5 seconds. And the starting price... Uh, a little hefty between sixty and seventy thousand dollars, but they will figure it out. Uh, it is coming to the U.S., but not likely to come to Europe. All right, what's next? The Cadillac Escalade is finally going electric. The Escalade IQ, the full luxury SUV with a full luxury price of starting at. $130,000, max range 450 miles, that's what GM is promising, which is quite impressive, 0 to 60 in less than 5 seconds, and it looks like uh, the Cadillac Lyric is going to have a big brother it always wanted. Moving on to the next one, and it is the Canoe pickup truck. Now, I gotta say, I never thought this one was going to ever enter the market, but Canoe has started delivering their minivans at the end of 2023, so the pickup is next. 200 plus miles of range, which is not very impressive, but it depends on what price they're going to put on this truck. 0 to 60 in... 6.9 seconds i guess this is one of those times when a period does ruin a good thing and of course this is something that i think the market needs because it looks like the canoe pickup truck designers hate the sharp angles as much as tesla designers love them so this is the anti cyber truck the Chevy Equinox EV is finally entering the market. The Chevy will continue making the gas version of the Equinox. And a lot of people are looking forward to this one because it is supposed to start at around $36,000 with over 300 miles of EPA range, 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds. And if Chevy is able to keep that starting price, I think it's actually going to be pretty successful. All right, now we got to talk about this one. The Deloitte. DeLorean Alpha 5. Yes, the DeLorean is back, but it is a very different company at this point. Now, they did get smarter and they're not making it out of the stainless steel, so they will save all of the trouble that the Cybertruck owners will be going through with over 300 miles of range, 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds. This one is going to be very, very interesting. Let's see if they can actually resurrect this icon. The Dodge Charger is finally going electric. The Dodge Charger EV is supposed to be coming out this year, though we don't know much about it. Not the price, not the specs, but we do know that if Dodge was to survive, it does need to go electric, and this is the best way to do it. I cannot wait to watch uh, the electric version of the Charger kick the gas version's ass. I just cannot wait. The GMC Sierra is going electric and we do need another electric pickup truck on the market. Now, we don't know if the starting price of $50,000 that GM is promising is going to be available this year, but at some point it will. It will have over 400 miles of range, 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, and it is definitely going to be welcomed into the market. The gas version will absolutely be kept on the market as well. All right, before before we move on to the next one, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Energy Pal. Are you thinking about going solar but not sure what panels to get, whether or not to get a home battery, or how much all of this is going to cost? Well, Energy Pal will do all of that for you and you will get a $500 gift card when your installation is complete if you use the link in the description of this video. Oh, and they even have this EV calculator that will tell you exactly what system to get so it can handle charging your EV all year round. That link is down there as well. All right, back to the list. The Honda Prologue is something that Honda definitely needs out there because they have already embarrassed themselves trying to come up with an electric car in Honda E and that was a disaster. So this is their second take at it and this one appears to be a pretty decent crossover with over 300 miles, 0 to 60 in 4 seconds and it looks pretty good. So depending on what price tag they're going to put on this EV, 
this should be at least a very moderate success. Moving on, the Alpine A290 Beta. Now, this is a new brand and it's coming to Europe in 2024. Unfortunately, we don't really know much about it except for the manufacturer cannot really make up its mind what it's actually going to be. They have described it as a compact sports car, an urban sports car, a multi-purpose sports vehicle, and a hatchback depending on which marketing material you would look so very interesting but at this point we're just going to have to keep our eyes on it and see if it's actually going to come to reality the bmw ix2 is going electric the gas version has been on the market for a little bit with over 220 miles that's converted from the WLTP range, around $65,000 converted from euros, and zero to 60 again, converted from kilometers at around 5.6 seconds. Now, I can't say that this is very impressive, but it is a BMW, so there are probably going to be some sales, though I gotta tell you, I think this one will have a tough time competing with all crossover SUVs that are coming on the market and have been on the market for a while. Moving on to the next one, and it is the Citroën EC3. Now, this model has been offered in a gas version for a while now in Europe, and the EV is going to be quite affordable at around 25,000 American dollars converted from euros, but for that, you're gonna have to deal with some unimpressive specs, which are 163 EPA equivalent miles and zero to 60 in 11 seconds. So. This is a budget car, but you're not going to get much for it. The Cupra Tavascan is essentially a little brother of the Volkswagen ID5. The Cupra is one of the Volkswagen Group brands, so you can expect a lot of very similar specs as the Volkswagen ID5 with about 340 miles of range, 5.6 seconds, that's 0 to 60 or 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. And this is going to be yet another Volkswagen Group EV on the market. Let's see how they do. It does look very interesting. And let's see if it can compete with its bigger brothers and sisters. All right, let's move on to the next one. And it is the Ford e Torneo Courier. And we do need more of the minivans on the market. There is already a gas version that's been available for a while. The electric version is only going to be available in Europe, which is a shame. We don't know much about it. It does look like a gas conversion, but at this point, we'll take it. We do need minivans. The Ford Explorer EV is coming to Europe, but unfortunately not coming to the US, which is surprising. We don't know much about the specs, but we do know it's going to start at around 45,000 euros, which is a little under $50,000, depending on the, how strong the dollar is going to be in 2024. There is, of course, already a gas version of uh, this car, and uh, Ford will continue making it. But let's see if this EV does well enough in Europe for Ford to bring it back to America. The Honda ENY1. Not only this EV has a pretty bad name, but also pretty bad specs to go along with it. At only 130 EPA equivalent miles, 7.6 seconds, is there a 0 to 60 specs, and yet it's going to be priced at $60,000 if you convert it from euros. I don't know who's going to be buying this. Honda has already embarrassed themselves with the Honda E that also had pretty bad specs and very high price. So I'm assuming this one will have similar fate. Now, this one does already have a gas-powered version, uh, which is the Honda ZRV, but I don't see how this one is going to be a success. All right, what's next? The MG Cyberster is beating Tesla Roadster second generation to market. Check out those scissor doors. It's got some pretty decent specs. 0 to 60 in about 3.2 seconds. 267 EPA equivalent miles. It's coming to Europe. It's coming to China. But there is already a gas-powered version of this car. So MG does know how to make it. And it is a very, very good-looking sports car. And we do need more electric-powered sports cars out there. The Peugeot E3008, there is already a gas-powered version, and we don't know much about the electric version except for the fact that it's going to have a very impressive range if they keep their promise at 435 miles. This is a pretty good-looking car. It is not going to come to the US. I don't think anybody even knows about Peugeot in the US, so this is going to be a very welcomed addition to the crossover selection in Europe. 
Moving on, the Renault 5 e tech Now, this is going to be a pretty cute little subcompact car, but uh, the range is also going to be very much subcompact at around 200 and the four EPA equivalent miles. We don't know much about it, including the price. If the price is right, it can actually be a success because it is good looking. Of course, it's going to be available in Europe only. I don't think uh, Renault is the brand uh, in the United States that people recognize. And uh, the mini cars are not something that Americans like to buy. This is just made for Europe car. It could be perfect if the price is right. All right, now we gotta talk about this one. The Renault Scenic e tech Now, this is the electric version of the gas-powered Scenic, and this one is not bad at all, with over 300 of EPA equivalent miles at only just above $50,000 converted from euros. We don't know much about the rest of the specs, but this does seem to be a pretty good addition to the crossover market that is being flooded but yet, uh, this one will probably fit pretty nicely. The smart number three, and it looks like the third time is the charm because I'm not a big fan of the smart brand until now. This is actually a pretty good looking electric vehicle. It's priced very well at around 42 equivalent US dollars, 232 equivalent EPA miles and zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Of course, it's not coming to the US. Unfortunately, I think, I think it's gonna do well if Smart decides to bring it to the US. It's already been out in China and it's coming to Europe in 2024. I think it's gonna do very well. I think it's a looker and it's. I think it's finally taking Smart in the right Smart direction. All right, the next EV is the KG Mobility Taurus EVX. Now, I gotta tell you, I've never heard of this brand. This is a Korean brand and this EV is already on the market in Korea. It's coming to Europe in 2024. Unfortunately, not coming to the US. We don't know much about the starting price or other specs, but it does look like it will have at around 269 miles, which is pretty decent. And it's a pretty decent looking crossover. So looking forward to that. The Audi Q6 e-tron, yet another electric Audi. I'm looking forward to this one. We don't know much about it, but it is supposed to hit both the US and European markets in 2024, but we do know that the range is going to be closer to 400 miles at around 373. Let's see how it does as the addition to the Audi electric vehicle family and the bigger Volkswagen Group electric vehicle family. The Cadillac Celestic. Now this is a big one. This is the full size ultra luxury lift back and the price is going to be Celestic as well. Starting at ready 340,000 American dollars with 300 miles of range, zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. It will be available in the US and Europe a little bit later. And I gotta tell you, they're not gonna be making too many of them, but this is gonna be one awesome electric car. All right, let's get to the next one, and it is the Hyundai Ioniq 7. Now, Hyundai has done really, really well with electric cars, and specifically the Ioniq brand. This is going to be yet another success, I can tell you already, even though we don't know too much about the specs. Uh, the range is going to be over 300 miles. That's pretty much the only thing that we know, but it is coming to the US and Europe in 2024. Now, what you're looking at right now is the concept called 7 by Hyundai, but it looks like Ioniq 7 is going to be based on that. So expect the design to be very similar. The Jeep Recon. Yes, Jeep is finally going electric and this is going to be the electric version of the Jeep Wrangler, though we don't know much about it. We don't know any specs, we don't know a price, we just know they're doing it. And they're doing it in 2024. They're gonna be bringing it to the US first and Europe and other global markets to follow. But that's all we know. I'm just excited that Jeep is finally joining uh, the century. Moving on to the next one, and it is the Jeep Wagoneer is going electric. There's obviously the gas version, but the electric version is the Wagoneer S. And I gotta tell you, it's got some pretty impressive specs at 400 miles of range, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. We don't know the price, 
but I would say expect nothing less than $70,000. It is coming to America first in 2024 and then Europe and other global markets. I am excited that Jeep is going electric. It's just about time and we just need to hope that they are going to be ready for the off-road experiences which are different in electric vehicles. The Lotus Emea. Now, you may be surprised to hear that this is not uh, Lotus's first electric car. It's not even their second electric car. Now, we don't know too much about it, not the price, not the specs, but we do know the most important spec of any sports car, which is 0 to 60. It will be 2.78 seconds, which is not that bad. It is coming to all global markets 2024, and it is a beauty. The Lucid Gravity. Now, this is the second car from Lucid, and even though they've had all kinds of production problems, they are the best at two most important things when it comes to electric cars, which is the range and the charging time. So take this one seriously. It's a full-sized SUV. It's a luxury SUV, over 440 miles of range, zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds, and I think it's pretty good looking. It's coming to the US in 2024 and to Europe after that. Moving on, the Mini Ace Man. This is yet another mini electric car and this one has a mini range at about 204 EPA equivalent miles. Unfortunately, we don't know anything else about the car, including the price. If you price it right, this could be a great electric choice. But if you price it too high, like Honda likes to do, this could be a disaster. It's coming to Europe and America and all over the world in 2024. And I gotta tell you, it's actually pretty good looking, don't you think? The Polestar 3, one of three new Polestars coming to the market this year. And I gotta tell you, the Polestar 2, to my surprise, has done very, very well. Obviously, it is a sub-brand of Volvo. It's got the infotainment system that's based on the Android Automotive OS, which I think is a huge perk. This one is going to have over 300 miles of range. The starting price is about $84,000, 0 to 60 in about 4.6 seconds. It's coming to the US, it's coming to Europe this year, and I, 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 I can't even tell you whether or not it's going to do well because I've been wrong about this one. So I think it's safe to assume that it's going to do at least as well as the Polestar 2. The Polestar 4, along with the Polestar 3 and Polestar 5, all coming to the market this year. This one's got pretty decent specs, uh, just like the rest of them, over 300 miles of range. It's going to start at around $60,000 and 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. As always, I'm going to mention this because the infotainment system is based on the Android Automotive OS, which I think is a huge perk. And of course, it is a sub-brand of Volvo. Coming to the US and Europe in 2024. The Polestar Precept or the Polestar 5, I don't know which name they're going to go with, but whichever it's going to be, it's going to be one of the three new Polestars on the market. They've done very, very well with the Polestar 2. We don't know much about this one. This is going to be an executive sedan. Pretty much no pricing or specs have been revealed, but I'm going to assume it's going to fall in line with the rest of them, probably with over 300 miles of range, but I'm going to assume this one will start closer to a hundred thousand american dollars it's going to be available in the us and europe this year 2024. all right the next ev is the ram 1500 is finally going electric they are at least one year late because of the ford f-150 the silverado they're both gone electric already of course there is the cybertruck and rivian and a couple of others that are already coming to the market as well but they are promising pretty impressive specs especially when it comes to the range at 500 miles 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds and they're coming to both the us and europe i expect that they're going to be probably closer to the end of the year because ram has been dragging their feet into the electrified future but i am excited that ram is finally here as well all right, let's get to the next one, and it is the Range Rover is finally going electric, though I'm not really sure how serious they are about it because they didn't even bother come up with a cool name or any name except for the Range Rover Electric. As a matter of fact, I have to show you their hybrid version because they don't really have much of a video or the specs or the price 
for the electric version, even though they are saying they're coming to the US and Europe in 2024. Instead, they have, you know, this video, which mainly features the girl here, which I don't mind, but aren't we supposed to be talking about the car? The Volkswagen ID7, this one's going to be an executive sedan. Not too many manufacturers make those anymore, but I love them. Over 300 miles of EPA equivalent range with a pretty decent starting price with just above $60,000 converted from euros. We don't know too much about it, but I do expect that Volkswagen is going to try to impress us and make this a relatively luxury car. It's coming to the US, to Europe and China this year, and I am looking forward to it. All right, what's next? The Volvo EX90. I cannot stop talking about how impressed I am by Volvo. Only 10 years ago, I wouldn't consider buying one, but now their designs are beautiful. They've gone electric pretty successfully. Their specs are pretty decent, including this one. I'll tell you about them in a second. And I cannot stop telling you guys that it is an Android-based operating system inside the car, which I think is a huge perk. Now, this one starts at around $77,000, which is fair because it's a full-sized SUV. 300 miles of range and 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds. All pretty decent specs for the US and Europe where it's coming to in 2024. So these are all of the electric cars that are coming to the market this year. But guess what? Last year I made exactly the same video, which means that all of the cars in that video are all available right now. And you can watch that video right here. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember, to stay charged.